Welcome to the Soul Circle Podcast. My name is Hank, and with me today is Ben. Hey, how's it going? It's going. It's going. I'm still, I'm still upset about uncut gems. Not thrilled. Are you sure you don't want to just do a podcast on that? Are you sure? Yeah, I guess. I I mean, I don't know. We should have decided this before. Uh, <laughs> before I mean, you brought it up. Now you've you've I altered the lead. course of history, Ben. I was going to use it as a lead-in, but maybe oh. it's just an hour-long lead-in. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I could be angry about it for a full for a full hour. I guess maybe. I mean, it could be a shorter episode, and we could do two episodes. Who knows? We could do anything, Ben. We have the power. I mean, we could. I can roll with it. I can roll with it. There's enough. Like, I've cooled off a little bit, so it's not just, like, swearing the whole time, probably. Sure. All right. Fine. Let's do we, Uncut Gems. Just no apparently one, you need to do this. No one will ever know what the episode was going to be. Until the next time. I so, might have also told people what we were going to do. Whatever. It's fine. I mean. Swerve. Yeah. Keep them on their toes. Um, yeah. So what's your what's your experience with Uncut Gems? I don't like. It's just a Netflix release, right? Because it just came out for no, me. No, I saw it in theaters. It was in theaters. Okay. Yes. Why did I think it was a Netflix movie? I don't know. Um, it came out of nowhere for me. It's not a Netflix movie. <laughs> the Irishman Marriage Story and Dolomite Is My Name are the big Netflix movies from last year. Yeah. See, Marriage Story and Irishman I knew. I guess I just... I don't know. I guess I assumed. I shouldn't assume, but I did. Um, when did it, it... It It came out recently, though, right? Like, I'm not... Yeah, it was last year. Okay. I thought it was more recently, but I guess when it showed up on Netflix, I just assumed that it didn't exist before then, because I hadn't, I didn't recall hearing much about it, I guess, somehow. Uncut I don't know. Gems came out in... That's wrong. <laughs> what does it say? <laughs> Google lied to say it came out in 2020. I mean, that sounds right for my timeline. It was December 13th. This is a December movie. Okay, so it's like basically... Technically, it premiered in August 30th at a Telluride, which is a film festival, but yeah. uh, that's not when I saw it. Limited so there was buzz about that in the U.S. on December 13th. Wide release on December 25th. Yeah. Yeah, for some reason, they're using like the U.K. thing. Weird. I don't know. Weird. Um, yeah, it didn't like exist at all for me before then um i knew nothing about it except for like the blurb on netflix about like somebody the dude's a gambler he's always looking for the next big score um, oh that yeah that the so blurb is not great i wrote i wrote a, a review on letterbox that was is literally just i wrote it because that blurb i saw in there was completely wrong mm, it's just like yeah. yo this blurb is a lie this is actually a movie about a man who's too annoying to live. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's not, it's, it's like technically right, but it's not at all. Like it's, yeah. I, the one thing that like made me actually interested in it was to my knowledge, it's the first Adam Sandler movie in a while where he's not just playing the same fucking character that he's played for the last eternity. Yeah. Unless there's like one I've missed. funny people. Yeah, I mean, he's still, like, whatever, but it's it's not, like, the same exact kind of humor, which I, which I like. Well, he was, I, so, like, he's been doing Netflix movies that were movies to release just to Netflix that were garbage that Netflix was paying him a lot of money to do. Okay. And he was, and he is, 
made no bones about just he makes movies because he wants to go on vacation places. So the movies just film somewhere where he and his friends can go on vacation there. I mean, hell yeah. Low effort. Like, I don't. Yeah, no, dude's living the dream. It's just I don't want to watch any of those bad comedies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, that's totally fine. And I haven't, I haven't seen. I don't know what the last thing I, I would have seen with him in it was, like the most recent thing. I, I don't know, but I mean, for me, it was probably Funny People. I probably haven't watched anything since then. Mm. Um. I didn't because I didn't watch the Hotel Transylvania movies that he voice acts in. Yeah, I haven't I haven't seen those either. I They're didn't on my see Pixels. Oh Jesus Christ, that's right. He wasn't Pixels. I didn't see it either. I forgot that movie existed until you just said it. I now, did listen so to that podcast where those two comedians watch Grown Ups two every episode. Ugh. <laughs> the worst idea podcast. Yeah, that's pretty terrible. Fun time, but I've never actually seen Grown Ups too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I mean, this role, like I was interested at the very least. Uh, Oh yeah, I I was. I mean, I was interested in this movie also just because I had seen the Safdie brothers, the directors, their last movie, Good Time, and I didn't like that movie as much as some people, but it was it was good. It was well made. It was a good time. It was also exactly a good time. No, it was definitely not a good time. It was an okay it time. Was bad. It was it was like it was again like a character just in one stressful situation after another. Yeah. It was Robert Pattinson. So that, See so this way. like it's not even it's not even It's like the style the specifically it's the uh, it's not even that he keeps getting in situation after situation like yeah he's a Do you just hate people talking over each other i really fucking hate people talking over each other dude it was giving me like it was giving me anxiety like everybody just shut the fuck up and let the other person get a goddamn word out i would have shot all of no. them it was terrible every single fucking person in that film lacks manners to say the least no spoken like someone who is not a new yorker i see how it is Ugh. it was terrible it was like a nightmare <laughs> Like, Ani was totally invested and, like, super into it. I'm like, I just want this ride to be over. Like, the fuck, fucking country bumpkin over here. Ugh, can't handle two conversations happening in his vicinity at the same time. It's not even, that's not even the problem. I've had to deal with that before, and that's its own separate thing. The problem is that it's literally <laughs> just two people talking, and they're fucking screaming at each other. Instead of taking a, a break for two seconds. Like... Why are you being so nonchalant about getting this guy's shit back to him? Huh? Huh? You had one fucking job, and you didn't do it, and now you're just, like, yelling over him while he's trying to ask you where the shit was. Like, it's not that difficult. It's not that difficult. You deserve death. That's, like, uh God, it was so... Ugh. So, like, on top of the regular, like, oh, shit, he's in another stressful situation, like, you have just... All of the mannerisms of everybody. I will say, I did enjoy the little twist of what, Arno, of Arno being like related to him, like what, what brother-in-law uh-huh. or something like that. That and that like Arno is actually the black sheep of the family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I, I enjoyed that, and at that point, like I naively thought that. The ride so far would pay off. And then, it, like, once Arno started, like, feeling a little hesitant about some of the stuff, and, like, I thought it was actually going to get to a, a nice resolution, and it didn't. It did get to a nice resolution. You got to the perfect... Nope. The only nope, appropriate resolution. Not. It just made me more perfect. angry. It made me more fucking angry. It was perfect. Like, what, is Arno not enough of a badass that these guys aren't just his lackeys? Apparently. Apparently not. He's just no, a big old puss. Arno's in over his head. Everybody deserved to die. Every single person. And only two of them did. That's a terrible ending. <laughs> like, I've never... I, 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 Have you seen Buried? 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 Whatever your accent is. Buried? No. You know what it is? You know the no. ending and shit? Okay. Nope. I'm going to throw out a, a massive spoiler because nobody should see that film. 
uh, dude wakes up in an underground, like basically a coffin underground with a lighter and a cell phone. And yeah, I've seen Kill Bill. <laughs> and that episode of CSI that Quentin Tarantino directed. Oh, that sounds right. But, you know, it's a movie like <laughs> two hours of locked him in like a glass to, uh, coffin. Yeah. And then it was cracking and like fire ants were crawling in. Okay. It's See, this fire. one was like it was cracking and like just sand was pouring in. Yeah, and... I, you've, you've actually, I remember you've told me the story of how much you hate this movie before. Who's yeah, yeah. Movie? Dude wakes up or uh, 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 it ends and it finds, you find out it's the wrong thing and the dude dies. And it's like yeah. the only person getting enjoyment out of that is the person showing it to their friends so he can laugh at them being miserable. Um, like, same exact thing. Like, the movie ended and I was so upset. And, like, simultaneously, Ani was like, oh, my God, that was so good. I'm like, I'm beyond pissed right now. I want to kill something. Like, this makes me want to to hunt an animal and then just tear the meat off the bone of that animal. Yeah, but it's a good movie. How? In what way? Like, yeah, it's annoying. It does that well, if that's its job. <laughs> what about it specifically is good? And I'll, I'll admit, I like the performances. That part was fine. I think I think Adam Sandler did good. I think everybody did their job well. I just hate what their job was. I just think it's funny. I think, uh, like, and I, for me, the payoff is he has those guys locked in that room with him. I mean, yeah, and he's just enjoying it. He's so he just he's like, uh. He's so broken in so many ways, but it's pretty. The fact, pretty funny. Like he's a miserable. He's, inc- he's a bad person. But like you get to see him in his element. Yeah, he's having a good time. I don't know. It like it holds its tension well of being a ride, and then it all releases, in the only way it could. <laughs> with him uh, fucking dying. <laughs> there is a uh, there is a subreddit. That encapsulates this movie perfectly is called R slash ruined orgasms. People uh basically about to about to climax and something happens and like the climax happens, but it's just like clearly bad. Like it just like something like a little dribble of cum coming out or something. Uh-huh. Just you know it's ruined. I thought it was gonna be just you you show someone the clip of Adam Sandler talking about I just came and then it ruins orgasms for them forever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was a that was a line. It just, you just are you just mad did he get shot at the end? What what's the I'm I mean again, I'm mad that he got shot. I'm mad that the dude who shot him was too fucking stupid. To understand that he wasn't going to get the like his chunk of the million dollars then, which is probably more than the bullshit he had in his yeah. store, clearly, based on what we've seen. Like, yeah, okay, dude had anger issues, but, like, you ever been so angry that you fucked off a chunk of $1.2 million? Because that guy probably isn't in a financial position to do that. And then he shoots I mean, Arno, his a... assumed boss, and yeah. I wanted him to die. I wanted everybody in that film to die. You know the why can't I? I can't think of the uh, Night of the Living Dead, right? That's the one where like mm-hmm. the the stuff goes in the air and everybody's just fucked. That's what I wanted. That's the ending I needed. That's Return of the Living Dead. Return of the Return. Living Dead. Sure. Um, Night of the Living Dead is the original. Gotcha. Black and white. So yeah, I uh, I needed everybody gone, not just two, and arguably like one of those two I was semi invested in. Everybody was awful. I don't think there's a single redeeming person in this film that I can look at and even care about in, like, a love-to-hate sort of way. I just hate everyone. But why do you need likable characters in a movie? I I mean, that can be nice. I don't need need it. I don't need likable characters, but, like, love to hate, at least. Like, characters that I'm like, yeah, you're a fucking asshole, and I'll watch it. Like, it's always Sonny gets that way sometimes, I guess. It's not a great comparison, but, like, I hate all of them. (laughs) 
but it's yeah. I like to hate them. Ugh, I'm getting all warm. <laughs> I just I don't know. so many things, and there's just so many like, uh, there's some. I I guess I don't know if it's like their their style or their shtick or whatever. They've only done like what two real movies, the the whatever brothers. Of Safties, um, no, I've only seen two of their movies. They did another movie. They've done like, they did one other fiction movie, I think, and they also did a documentary. Oh, that'd be a nightmare to watch. I'm I sure. Know. Um, what was I gonna? What was I gonna? I don't say? know. Like, like Good Time was kind of their breakout. Like, they got to make this movie because Good Time did so well. And they'd, like, been working on this movie since before they made Good Time. But they just couldn't get, like, the, the stars they wanted. Mm. And, like, the Ugh, an NBA player in it and stuff. I'm so upset I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Where was I going? How would I start that off? Do you remember? Uh, you were talking about their... If you didn't know if it was just their style. Oh, uh, right, 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 right. Uh, there were so many things that just, like, happened and you thought they were going to go somewhere. And then they didn't. Like, I the, the ending I was pulling for, and I thought we had, like, a shot. I, I thought there was a decent chance. was, like, that random dude who's like, I got a fake Rolex from you guys. Somebody help. And everyone's like, no, we can't. Get the fuck out of here. Like, I was, he looked kind of weird. Like, he looked like a, a weird dude. I was really hoping he would just pull out a gun and fire at everybody. And just everybody's fucking dead. That would have been appropriate. I would have enjoyed that ending. The ending wasn't bad enough. Or in bad <laughs> in terms of, like, devastation, I guess. Um, or, or, if, uh, yeah, like, fully bad. Like, if even if the bad guys win. Like, if Arna was alive, and... They shot him or beat the shit out of him or whatever, and then they captured the girl and they got their money, and the dude was left like broke again or, or whatever. That's also palatable. I would have I would have been fine with that ending. I think it's just such a mishmash. I hate it. I hate it so much. And the music was. I don't like what they did. Even from like the. Actually, you know what? Not even just people talking over each other. That was, like, the first thing I noticed. Like, we had our little introduction with the mm. Ethiopian miners. And it, like, does the admittedly cool shot where it, like, goes into the gem and then it, like, turns into his colonoscopy. That was good shit. I appreciated it. Um, like, there was just this song playing for a super long time. Like, they were just there was constant music and it just kept going. And then he kept, he like started talking and the music like stayed at the same volume and just kept along with it. And at one point, like literally, I'm just to Anya, I'm like, can they fucking stop? <laughs> like, can they turn it off, please? Could there be like a moment of silence for our dialogue? And there just wasn't. So it, it, the no. stress started incredibly early. Incredibly early. Yeah, I don't know. Because, like, just none of that shit bothers me. Like... You're a monster. There's nothing... <laughs> <laughs> You're just an absolute monster. It's, it's really just all about the things that I liked about it. None of those none of those style choices, like... I guess. Upset me. Because it it's all about, you know, a tension that ratchets up as he goes from one it's all about continuing that that score like yeah. every any gambling thing he wins he's like just immediately gonna flip that into the next one yeah 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 like there's no there's no there's no satisfaction for him and i so like that's I like that. that's why that i'd like the ending because the the no the end is He's fucking pissed if he just dies. Because there's no... He's never going to stop. I would have preferred to see him continue. Well, the movie has to end. The movie could have ended with him, like, resolving that debt 
with that port with a portion of that money or something or like just continuing it some like i would have either wanted to see it end with him i mean dead as i've said with everybody else in the film and involved in the filming process or like i don't know a shot of him like throwing his whatever hundred thousand or more that he gets from it if they let him have that much whatever he gets from that score just yeah putting it back into something or like borrowing money from someone for another big scheme or some shit so like clearly he's just, you know learn nothing or that sort of thing no that's i mean it. it's very like i think i think the movie worked on anya like perfectly mm -hmm. <laughs> um just i with yeah, um with taste got it <laughs> don't start with bad taste <laughs> bad taste is taste you're not wrong like she was maybe she was less annoyed by people talking over each other um <laughs> that's why i just remember the part where you learn he was like placing the bets or whatever initially and then arno had them canceled yeah like i wanted to shoot myself in that moment i'm like i don't know if i we're not that deep into this film i don't know if i <laughs> if i can handle this whole thing and ani was like this is amazing like what like this is like how is it gonna how is it gonna get up from here like there's already so much tension how could there be more and then it keeps you know building of course yeah uh -huh. i started playing on my phone that's how i <laughs> that's how i dealt with the situation monster maybe maybe the real uncut gems are the ones we made on the way. Ugh. Yeah, what's, uh, like... I mean, like... Mm. Mm. I wanted more. <laughs> like, maybe something oh, more with so the bad. opal? I just... I, mm -hmm. I don't even know what I want to say. <laughs> it's just a... I just want to scream. Uh, yeah. Why is it called Uncut Gems? Is there like a reason? It, oh, it's it an uncut opal. Literally, that's the reason. I could have just sure. called it shiny rocks, or something. no. Because <sighs> part of it being like an uncut opal is what makes it hard to evaluate. Yeah. So that's why they want to. They need to appraise it. Yeah. But then he gets this at him so late, so they're like, "Fuck you," <laughs> and they appraise it lower. It was just a very I mean like while I was watching I mean hindsight's 2020 of course but while I was watching it like I think the problem is that it gave me too much hope <laughs> like I really You're thought on your phone I can't imagine like you were I was still like invested. invested I was invested for a good chunk of the <laughs> film and then there'd be, like, parts that, like, bring me back in. I can be on my phone and pay attention to a movie if it's not good enough. <laughs> Boo this, man. I'm not, you know, I, I watched, I was on my phone a little bit in the comfort of my own home watching a film. I was not playing Pokemon Platinum in the movie theater while watching <laughs> Harry Potter 6. No, I mean, no. The, the epitome is now someone on their phone looking at images, uh, GIFs of Sonic while at the Sonic movie. That's, that's that happened? The, the example we use now. Yeah. Shit. That's pretty good. <laughs> that was on uh, the top-down perspective. Paul's podcast, uh, Sean, said that happened in his theater. That's pretty amazing. There's a dude on his phone during the movie looking at gifts of Sonic. Why? During the like, movie. Ugh. That's top tier. I mean, that's amazing. <laughs> like, what? Like, <laughs> they say, like, just any know. gifts? Like, just rant, like, cartoons or. Yeah. 
Okay. Sure. Right on. Hyping himself up. <laughs> Maybe he was like looking at old Sonic, like remembering the good times. What have they done to my boy? What have they done to my boy? He, why doesn't he have teeth? Did he not have teeth? <laughs> no, that was the first trailer. Oh, the first one. He okay. had human teeth. Oh, yeah. And it was upsetting. <laughs> I mean, many things <laughs> wrong with that. <laughs> so yeah, how is... Um, yeah, I'm not as high on Uncut Gems as some people. I just enjoyed it. I'm not like it's... I'm not like it's the best, one of the best movies ever or whatever or of the year. Like it's in my top twenty-five, but so you know, I just enjoyed it. It was just, it was a good time. It was funny. Yeah, that's a word for it. Skim yeah. past it. I it can was see funny in I the can... way that like a thriller is funny because. The situations are ridiculous because this guy is the fucking maniac. <laughs> I could see why, like I could see, and, how people he, and like it's it. like it's a particular kind of shitty person that's you know not yeah. necessarily what I've seen a, a bunch in a movie, and like you know that gambler, that pure gambler. It's like yeah, I recognize this as a as a this feels real. And I liked like the NBA stuff, like Kevin Garnett being in the movie. That was cool. Yeah, that it's was also neat. funny. Like, Kevin Garnett's like a like kind of the perfect person to play himself in the past because like he he's, he doesn't look any older. Yeah. <laughs> despite despite many years of passing, he looks exactly the same. So that works out. Yeah. Was there a reason that they had it set in 2012, or just choice? Um, I think they wanted, I forget, they wanted, like, it to tie into that game, I guess, hmm. once they picked Garnett. Sure. And, like, they, you know, the, the championship ring thing plays into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because I think they, they had to fit the movie to the game after that Garnett became the guy. Because they went through a bunch of drafts with, like, different NBA players. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. That makes a lot of and, sense. Like, and part of the reason it ended up being Garnett is because he's retired and they had to film during the NBA season. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because <laughs> I listened to I listened to it, an interview with them. Um, originally, it was going to be Amari Stoudemire because they're huge Nick fans. And then for a while, it was going to be... Um, Joel Embiid, who's on the Sixers. But then Embiid couldn't do it because they were shooting during the season. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, also, that hilariously, sense. they said that thing that uh, Adam Sandler's character says to Kevin Garnett about the fucking Amari's free throw, like the first time he beats him, is like a thing they said to Garnett when they first met him. So they were that asshole. Uh,. That's funny. Which which bit? They like bring up this specific game the Knicks lost to okay, the Celtics, yeah, yeah. and like it's like the pettiest like Knicks beef thing that like no one but a Knicks fan would care about because like in the scheme of other NBA, it's fucking who would remember this? Yeah, I mean that also kind of makes sense. Uh, or it makes it more interesting, maybe yeah. unintentional, when Adam Sandler is like, "I'm I'm a Knicks fan. I'm rooting for the Celtics. What? what who? What the hell? Who? Who would have thought? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know this thing, but that's you know what gambling does to people. Yeah, yeah. Sports yeah. gambling does to. Well, I mean, if you are sports. if you are gambling and you are not taking the best bet to win, you are gambling either incorrectly or no. Hopefully doing I mean, a... gambling is. <laughs> Gambling is just about risking money. That's gambling. Well, if yeah. you're like trying to make money, really, you're just you're, that's your job. <laughs> you're doing work. Gambling is about the thrill of risking money to possibly win something. That's why people are addicted to gambling because it's about the gambling. It's not about the 
making the money necessarily. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I it could be both. I think. Sure. But, I'm but I think I mean, like I think the the more I sure bet it is, the less like gambling it is. Well, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do think like even without the the necessity of like focusing on a, a particular game due to Kevin Garnett, like I think it's good when movies set themselves in a in a time period intentionally. Like even if if movies today like somehow had a reason for being set in like 2016 or whatever you know it it makes them age a little less poorly potentially i guess i don't know that's kind of maybe that's my opinion i don't yeah i don't think it i don't think it matters to me set the movie whenever set the movie the time that works for the movie like if you want to deal with a particular thing then sure set it at a particular time but yeah I don't know. Depends on the movie. Depends mm. on the movie. I'm not making any blanket statements about that here. Wow, coward. Romeo and Juliet <laughs> could be whenever, theoretically. But maybe don't do the anachronistic thing that that one movie did. The one with Leo? It's Yeah. Maybe don't do that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a masterpiece. It's... <laughs> An uncut gem, if you will. <laughs> a little rough, but the intrinsic need value. Little, need a little cutting. <laughs> need a little cutting. <laughs> Sniff here. I don't know. I, I obviously haven't watched that movie all the way through. I've only seen parts of it. We watched it in my high school English class after yeah, reading Romeo and Juliet. Uh -huh. I don't think it made people like the play more. It did not help mm. in that sense. Yeah. I uh actually you know what? I never looked it up. Was the uh was Adam Sandler's wife, was that Idina Menzel? Yep. Okay. And I like that scene where he asks her to take him back and she's like, Fuck you. Your what face are you is so dumb. About? <laughs> Uh, it's great because he's a fucking like he's so stuck in what he wants in the moment mm -hmm. he's like he doesn't think about any of the repercussions of any of his actions he's just all about what do I want right now in this yeah. moment I mean I I identify with that to an extent I'm bad with that sometimes. Not on the same level, necessarily, but... Uh, okay. That's why I hate the movie, because I see myself. Mm. You too want to trap someone in a room and make them enjoy the thing you want? No. Oh, wait, no, that's me. I would have... I would have ended... I would... If <laughs> I was... podcast. In, if I was in the film, I would have... Uh. Uh, my... I would have... The film would have ended with me in prison. Because as soon as someone talked over me for the third goddamn time in a conversation, I would have killed them right then and there. I would have fucking destroyed them. And anyone else who decided it was necessary. You know... You know the dude in uh, Will, Will Ferrell's character? I, yeah, Will Ferrell's character in Austin Powers when he's like, anyone who asks me the same question for a third time, that's my weakness. That's fucking me. If you have to say something to me three times, I'm going to get pissed. I'm going to it, it upsets me so much. Same for talking over like just let me say a fucking word, please. It's not that difficult to shut up and let me talk. So did you have a good time at least? <laughs> I mean, 
maybe like I had a good time because Anya had a good time and I think like some sadistic part of her like enjoyed watching me squirm for the mm-hmm. whole film. Oh. Yeah, no, I mean this isn't one I would have re- recommended for you to watch. It's not I wouldn't expect you to like this movie. Yeah, honestly. I didn't like if um, I if I had looked into it a bit more, but I just like we were looking for stuff to watch. She had suggested Irishman or whatever else. I'm like, "Oh, Uncut Gems." Like, I heard that one was good. And she I I think I certainly like, like half the length of the Irishman. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Isn't that like two and a half hours at least? Yeah. Two forty or yeah. something. Three? Is it a full I remember it was that we were gonna watch it once and I'm like it's like ten thirty, I can't start this film. It's like the second longest movie I saw last year. It's two hundred and nine minutes. Ooh. Yeah, that's spicy. Uh, I mean, the longest movie. Yeah, it's I like saw. a two-hour movie and then another thirty-minute movie or whatever. When uh, I I watched Watchmen in twenty twenty. Yeah, that'll probably be the longest movie I see all year, unless I end up watching a Lord of the Rings extended edition. I don't see myself sitting down for another movie of that length. Yeah, I won't want make you watch an elephant sitting still. I for what was that one about again? I know you've talked about it. No, uh, weren't we like you were joking about it because it's Daniel X's favorite film? What? Oh, because okay. he likes elephants. <laughs> That's yeah, not why. I, I, don't know. I remember you joke making that um, joke. Yeah. Just the story is. The title comes from the idea of an elephant in a circus who's been trained to sit still while constantly being poked with sticks. And the movie is about characters who cannot sit still while they are constantly poked with sticks. Just like bad thing after bad thing happens to them and they just can't Mm. deal with it. They They can't roll. Yeah. It's just like anxiety and stress... Oh, for four hours. Four hours. But so because it's like, of that, it has, like, the funniest moment I saw. Like, it's, like, one joke, and it's, like, the funniest thing I saw all year. So, does I mean, if you explain Just it, it's situationally, so it's not, or... it's, it's not, it's not kind of, it's one of those, like, you had to be there. Mm-hmm. I would yeah, say. yeah, yeah. Because it's, like, all built into the film. And what's going on at the time? Mm-hmm. It's like a release of a sort. <laughs> I'm trying to think what the. Uh, great. I guess yeah, the the film I saw, be like the last film I watched before this one was Parasite. Also, mm-hmm. so that you know. Yeah. Yeah. And before that, it was... <laughs> we could do that, but I wanted you to watch other movies for context to talk. Yeah, about yeah, that. yeah. And I've just been a lazy yeah. piece of shit. Yeah. I think um, I also might watch at least Shoplifters with Anya because she really, she really, really liked Parasite as well. Yeah, 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 I think she'd like Shoplifters. I mean, Shoplifters is fucking great. So, um, I will also say the Safdie's other their movie before Uncut Gems, Good Time. Does not have like a, the talking over people thing. <laughs> oh, I'm never watching any of their films ever again. That's fair. I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't expect you. Like Foxy said, "Yo, oh, you should watch this." I'm like, I don't think after he had this reaction to Good Gems, I don't think telling Ben to watch any of their movies is like a good idea. <laughs> yeah, no, they're they're blacklisted. <laughs> they have a, you know. Again, that that movie is also about an aggressively unlikable character, which is one yeah. of the reasons I liked it less than some other people. Like that does, that does like put a ceiling, was putting a ceiling on it for me in a way. Mm-hmm. Of like, it's pretty good. I mean, this, these characters are fucking. I'm not that invested because they're terrible. <laughs> they're terrible people. <laughs> which I don't know. Like some, there's some movies where like I can still get into 
like get really really like it, but I don't know. They're still good. I cut gems is a good movie. Don't listen to Ben. It's but uh I mean it's a thing. I it's not for everyone. It's very abrasive. So my primary means of of drinking water is from a you know you go to a restaurant you get like the big industrial like plastic cup that says like pepsi on it or coca-cola or Mm -hmm. whatever um over the years my brother has acquired many of these cups from various restaurant locations and i have a, a pretty nice one that i lifted i think it was brand new at the restaurant i don't do this often I don't do this often. It was a one-time deal. A second-time deal if you count a knife and a fork. Um, it, a nice deep blue color. Like when it's filled with liquid, it has like it gets a bit of a purple tint to it. And I was like taking a little sip. And I saw Foxy's message in Discord saying that he thinks uh, Uncut Gems will end up being like a bit of a classic. And I almost fucking crushed mm. my cup in my hand when I read that. Just almost snapped it. I mean, it's already was a classic. It's, How could you not even... say those words to me? <laughs> it just is. It's How is it? Cl- what makes it a classic, though? Classic seems like such a strong word to use. I, I would, I would put, I would. That's a pretty broad carrot category to me. So really, yeah. There are but so we'll... many good movies. Okay, so it, is Parasite a classic? Yeah. Okay. I, I like th- that checks out. That checks out. What, uh, like, give me, like, two other classics you've seen this year. No, I'm curious. I'm, cu- <laughs> I'm just curious, like, what you think is a classic. Wait, a classic like, just a movie that's that would be worth rewatching at some point. Oh, or, okay. Like, putting on so, TV. <laughs> what is the opposite of a classic in terms of opinions, I, I suppose? Uh, <laughs> well, it would be something that was, like, popular, but boring like i wouldn't call uh marvel movies that i many of i enjoy i wouldn't call them classics okay because they're like a one and done for me sure like they're like they're forgettable in in that way or like they're they're like a very entertaining movie that you also completely forget i wouldn't call a classic like i'll fucking remember uncut gems yeah yeah Okay, I mean that's a, I I think I agree mostly with that with that definition, like something something that you would add to like your your repertoire of. Just even think scene. about again, yeah. That you even think about again, fuck. This might be. <laughs> this might be the most classic movie I've ever seen. <laughs> I don't know. It just be it would be if you're making a list of movies. You'd put it on it. Okay. Because you yeah. remember it. I don't know. Like, I mean, and there's, you know, I there are probably people out there who argue that despite my protest, I did enjoy the movie. And I just don't recognize it because it made me feel anger so strongly. Uh-huh. Like, yeah, it certainly made you feel a thing. It That's made why me we had feel to do a this thing. Because you were feeling me, a thing. It, it definitely did. There is no way around that. <laughs> And like, for and other the worst emotions, thing is a movie that's just like, ugh, yeah, just like, you, uh, that was boring. I have nothing to say about it. It just sucked. Like that's the worst. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's certainly the worst for a podcast. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's not insane. a lot of content to be it's drinking about. Going uh, yeah. for like an hour. Oh, that and garbage I, like, truck though. That, <laughs> fuck yeah, bud. Our uh, <laughs> our um. Why can't I think of the word? It's, a, it's another character on the show. It's another character. <laughs> Some people have, like, their cats, like, show up and they start meowing. Maybe a garbage truck that shows up at the end of episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Do one final dump before playing the outro. Yeah. I mean, like, it's kind of... I guess, I, like, maybe, maybe because... I, I could see myself like warping uncut gems to be like a thing that I enjoyed in the sense of it making me angry, but like because it's not its 
purpose. Like, it makes it hard. Like, the last film that I... If you can if you can remember me talking about any other films that made me truly angry, there's one that I can think of. Do you remember... Have we talked about any on the show? Or on the I podcast? Okay. The one I can think of that really, like... It just pissed me off so bad, but that was the intention of the film, was Dear Zachary, which is more of a documentary film anyway. But, mm. um, and that's like the purpose is to make you want to fucking kill people when you're done watching it. But mm-hmm. I, and like in that sense, like I enjoyed it. Like I came out of it. I'm like, I'm like, that was really good, but also I'm going to murder someone. The person in the, yeah. about that the film is about. Um, in this, like, because it didn't, it just, it, I don't know. <laughs> It yeah. elicited that uh, so there was, and it wasn't trying yeah. to. When was it? When was it from? So there's a movie. Don't worry, he won't get far on foot. Okay. Which stars Joaquin Phoenix. Out of oh right 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 that guy Joker. He's like a and, uh, paraplegic uh, alcoholic. Okay. In the movie, but he's almost like he's like a miserable person, and it's a it's a Gus Van Sant movie. It's pretty pretty miserable time, and it it was one of those where at the time I just wasn't in the mood for a movie that that was that miserable. Mm-hmm. So it was like this is very well made, but I just don't like I. <laughs> this is not where I wanted like the headspace I want to be in. I didn't have a good time. Yeah, but, absolutely. And it was a it was a 2018 movie, but like s- thinking about it since, and I haven't watched it. Like, my opinion has only grown. Like, I only like that movie more and more. Because it did such... It did, like, such a good job of depicting alcoholism. And every mm-hmm. fucking movie I see since that has an alcoholic character in it, and it's fucking terrible. <laughs> it's like, I only like that movie more. Yeah. Um, And just, like, you know, I'm, like, feeling better. I'm I'm less depressed at the mo- than I was in 2018 or whatever, so I I'm more okay with a movie that's fucking miserable. Yeah. Um. So that's one that's like definitely sw- swapped on me, and also that's one I point to. I'm like, like this is jo- Joaquin Phoenix is like really good, and like Joker is garbage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Um. I actually didn't realize, like, it never clicked with me that he was also in Gladiator. I just never. Uh-huh. I The last time I watched that movie was a long-ass time ago, like, before I knew anything about anything. <laughs> so. Uh-huh. Um, I, yeah, maybe, maybe, like, looking back, I'll, like, Uncut Gems will grow on me, but, I mean, it's the fucking heat of the moment right now, baby. That's what it's about. Um, Hell yeah. And I do, like, I can admit, like, I'm just, I'm, I'm looking at the the Wikipedia thing right now, and it says, Adam Sandler's performance garnered widespread critical acclaim, with several critics deeming it the best of his career. I really did like his performance. Like, it was, it was a great performance. Like, he did his job, and, like, actually his character specifically, like, I did kind of love to hate. Maybe not. Maybe not enough. But yeah, yeah, he was I, trying. I, I, yeah, I, 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 it's it very. It's, it's like he makes. He's made a lot of movies where he's just clearly not trying. Yeah, and then he tries, and you're like, oh, you showed up for work today. <laughs> you phone it in. I guess I also like. I don't know why necessarily but i really like seeing people who do like funny bullshit movies and then suddenly they're in like a serious role and it's very good Mm. like i seeing uh you know when i was little i i saw mostly robin williams like funny stuff right like rv or flubber or whatever and then Uh and then i saw him in what dreams may come and i was like fuck that was incredible so I don't know. I just I like seeing people like Adam Sandler, whoever, to in a more 
And a, I mean, it's a ridiculous role in this case, but yeah, yeah. It's not a happy Gilmore. No. It's also different than Punch Drunk Love, which is like the other, like serious, critically acclaimed movie he's done. I've never. I don't even recognize the title. It's good. But again, it's like all, he's a ball of stress. <laughs> and he is like all these sisters who are constantly yelling at him. Hmm. So I don't yeah. know. I don't know yeah, if that's for you. Probably, probably not. I'm already stressed. I don't need more. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Also, like, you're stressed in life. It's like not, sometimes that's not what you want for your entertainment when you're feeling that way. Yeah, you know? dude. At least not this kind of, not this kind of stress. It's too real. Maybe that's the problem, like Exactly people talking over me and shit. It's too real. Yeah, I, I will yeah. say, like the th- <laughs> the thing that probably would have pushed me over the edge with this film into like it made me so angry that I circled back and I'm like calm again. If they would have had <laughs> someone come in and like ask someone the same question three times. <laughs> That would have fucking done it. <laughs> <laughs> that's something. Uh, that's something. Uh, I, I probably won't get in trouble for sharing. It's something uh, uh, me and Anya have had to work on. I don't know why, but she's like one of those people, and she's like, "Do you like it?" I'm like, "Yeah, this is great." She's like, "Do you like it?" I'm like, "Yeah, it's good." Do you like it? I'm like, "Okay, we're <laughs> getting less good now." Just like. Just <laughs> A vein is like popping in my neck. I can feel it. Ugh. I thought the Promare podcast was hot. This, that was nothing. <laughs> Incredibly warm. Oh, man. Now I just need to trap you in Groundhog Day movies, though. You're, <laughs> you're stressed by the th- same thing happening oh, over and over again. That, by, yeah. <laughs> God. <laughs> No thanks. All right. Um I think that's a podcast. Yeah. You can uh email us salt circle podcast at gmail dot com. Uh Salt Circle Pod on Twitter. Salt Circle Podcast, Google Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher various other feeds that pull from there. Oh, we have an email. Oh, shit. From Zeiss. Antonio. Bonjour, Mr. Salt Circles. <laughs> Recently, I fell down a rabbit hole about arcade sticks and how to customize them. I've never played with one in my life, but for some stupid reason, my brain thought it would be okay to play a side-scrolling action platformer with it. Or the Mega Man Zero series, to be more specific. For reference, those games are meant to be played handheld with multiple precise inputs. Yeah, that sounds terrible. Hmm. Arcade skick for a precision platformer. I could uh, like what, what kind of weird. Hmm? Oh, I was I was gonna say uh, like there's a lot of side scrolling like arcade games though. It could be all right depending on the platformer and depending on the stick, I suppose. Well, <laughs> if you have yeah. something that's too hammy, it's gonna feel like trash. Yeah, like your whatever the. Like the the fit is for it, like whether it's like a square that you're moving your your stick around in, or it's like an eight way directional one that can matter depending on the game. Oh yeah, yeah. For for but also like because like just going from left to right can take a little too long. I think for like a platformer, like those arcade games aren't usually built that way. Yeah, to like go back and forth like that mm-hmm. i don't know but yeah like if you're playing pac-man or a <laughs> side-scrolling shooter arcade six great yeah but uh his question is what kind of weird challenge or just stubborn tangents have you taken or gone through for no explicable reason other just than just because other than because it could be done uh i mean i speed run spider-man for the Super Nintendo. 
I, I feel like any speedrun thing is because it could be done. Yeah. Me and Paul running that one level in Million to One Hero and then never yeah. touching the game again. That was a good time. <laughs> um, I mean, like, I guess, like, certain customization stuff, like, with my phone, like, doing themes on my phone or, like, widgets and shit that make it look nice or clean it up. Uh, kind of same with my desktop. Um, maybe the biggest one I've ever done is wallpapers. Uh, I have, let me, I'll pull it up here. I'm going to guess 4,000 wallpapers. We'll, uh, we'll see here. Um, uh, nope, 3,300, 3, 12 and a half gigabytes of 1080, 1080p wallpapers. And... Yeah, like, I went through a lot of, like, I edited or adjusted any of them that needed it. I removed any watermarks. I converted all of them to PNG, and I, like, checked their quality and shit. I went mm. deep. Like, I went, they're good wallpapers. Except my, uh, my girls folder uh, reflects a bit of an outdated taste in women for me. <laughs> ah, so, uh -huh. we can see what, like, it's Ben no from... Her. No longer I mean, your like, waifus. There's like a you couple like them. like Jennifer Garner's there. There's like some stuff where I'm like, yeah, but a lot of pasty chicks, which I'd grown out of, I suppose. Fallen out of favor. I guess mostly. Or there's like uh I mean, you know, like Summer Glau or something, or uh Olivia Wilde from Tron. But yeah, no, that's, I um, think that's definitely the deepest I've gone on something. Yeah. Uh, I, I went down the arcade stick hole, but I only got to the part of buying the arcade stick, but not the parts to customize it. So it, I never use it because I wanted it for fighting <laughs> games and it doesn't have the right gate as a square gate it needs to be replaced. Mm -hmm. I just haven't gotten around to it. And I, I did it just to, ha like, have it, because I have a thing of, like, liking having different controllers. But yeah. I've never actually loved playing on stick, so, <laughs> so I don't really know why I was, like, into it, the idea, either. The thing I liked that I really, that I did get at the time was I got, like, a special fight pad, like a controller that was specifically for fighting games. Nice. Because that's, like, the way I care about it. Um... But also, the current hole I've been going down is watching YouTube videos on, like, uh, bootleg handhelds that yeah. are, like, for emulating classic games. And it's, like, realistically, I don't want any of these things. But there is a part of my brain that's like, what's the best one? Would I want it? But yeah. really, I'm like, I don't, I don't actually want any of these. If I just wanted to emulate old games, which I really don't um i could just do it on a psp or something like use hardware i have to do it fine mm -hmm. i would, don't need to spend like 40 to 80 bucks on this dumb bullshit but it's cool it's also <laughs> there's like it's like terrible but also kind of appealing yeah man I'm like which one are the what's the best what's the the smallest what's the the coolest shape I don't know, dude. I guess I didn't. I didn't. Also, dive. I want. The, I actually want that analog thing. That's the FPGA that hardware emulates a Game Boy. Oh yeah. I think Peter mentioned. I that want that thing a couple times. I don't know how much I wanted. I'll actually use it. <laughs> I bought that Super Nintendo one and have not used it that much, for it, honestly. But mm. I still want it. Um, I still have that desire. I looked briefly when I was playing a lot of Kerbal Space Program. That's one of those games like people just go fucking hard on. And mm. people have made a lot of custom... Like, I mean, you have to make the entire thing yourself. But they'll make, like, I guess control panels. Like, you have your switches, you have your, you have your stage staging button, you have your levers and shit, and, like... 
abort buttons and like all this other it's just very cool and i love the idea of it i I did look into it it's a hell of a lot of effort to make one and Mm -hmm. because of that like and the fact that they're all custom made like you're not going out and buying like you could probably find a generic one but it wouldn't work in the same proper way and they're like fucking expensive like there's just no way it will ever happen I don't play Kerbal that much. I don't play space games that much. Um, yeah. I do... I guess I could probably put it to use for something else. When I was playing Elite Dangerous a lot, I, uh... People were talking about how you could set up, like, voice commands for your ship. Like, full, like, Star Trek. Like, computer set uh-huh. things to whatever. Oh. And I definitely just like, just like you had an Alexa. <laughs> yeah, essentially. Uh, I definitely dropped like forty or fifty dollars of like a high end voice. What's the what's the thing? <laughs> like text to speech, I guess. Uh huh. And it came with like a thing that you can like set. You can set uh, voice commands to macros, essentially. Mm-hmm. So, that was that was pretty great. It was not edgy at all. I definitely didn't uh, didn't have it set up so that when I said ashes to ashes, the British girl would say dust to dust and set phasers to weapon mode. And it should have played Ashes to Ashes by David Bowie. <laughs> it was, I mean, it was a fun time. Yeah. Ty, Ty yelled at me when I would play it, when I would do it while we were playing multiplayer. So that was the reason why I did it multiplayer. Mm-hmm. It would annoy nice. him. <laughs> I can't think of yeah, I, if I had more disposable income, I might go down the hole of like really getting learning soldering and yeah, go a little even deeper into the the hardware thing. Mm-hmm. There's there's interesting stuff there that's cool to me, but I don't. Um, the soldering that what when a thing requires soldering, that's a that's currently a wall for me. I'm like. I'm out. Yeah, yeah. Um, when I had one of the old, like, like, it's not that, co- like, it couldn't, it could be not, not a nope, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, solder, like, it's definitely, to me, it's terrifying. Yeah. I would just want to, like, you know, do it on stuff that was, that I could practice on a bunch to feel comfortable, and that would be fine, probably. I would need the reps Um, when I had a brick iPod, uh-huh. uh, I think, I, I forget what, what sparked it, but you could like, I, I forget what the term was. I don't know if it was jailbreak at the time, but you could like get in and like fuss with everything and yeah. people would do like crazy shit. I just want to change graphics and I made like my entire mm. iPod like avatar the last airbender based nice so like the background was like a whatever <laughs> screenshot or something and then the, the uh. loading bar for a song was uh i think it was katara water bending and then the volume <laughs> the base like the empty volume bar was her water bending and as you turned it up it was it turned into zuko fire bending yeah <laughs> yeah that was a that was a good time coolest fucking ipod ever Eight through battery like nothing else, but it looked good. Mm. Eating through battery sounds like a deal breaker to me. <laughs> I it was uh, like it was kind of already old, so that's fair. Eh. That's fair. Yeah, I've never jailbroken any of my devices. Oh, I, like, I I can't just, be asked. Yeah, especially like for my I've thought about it with my phone because there's like there's some stuff you can do that I know is not technically hard you just apply the jailbreak and then you remove whatever folder or you can do like very simple stuff but i just Mm -hmm. don't want to mess with it i know i'd fuck it up (laughs) yeah it's like i care enough to like learn about it and like how to do it and then then i don't need to do it anymore i'm satisfied I could do this, and now I can think about like what 
it would be like if I did this. And that's enough. It's like if you buy if people who buy lottery tickets, the point is to think about what if you won the lottery. But you can actually do that without buying the lottery ticket. Yeah. That's that's the galaxy brain right there. You can have yeah. your fun and not just give someone a dollar <laughs> or waste your time doing a thing you don't actually want to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, deep deep dives are a good time. Especially when they're, they're like so good. weird niche things. I guess I'll I've I'll not Oh yeah. Done enough of them yeah. lately, I would say. I before this. I have zero desire to ever do it myself. But my favorite kind of like deep dive YouTube channel that I've talked a bit about is uh the guy who does like, he does restorations on Hot Wheels cars. Like, old Hot Wheels cars. That's pretty good nice. shit. Like, it's just very... Like, of course there's someone who fucking does this. It's great. Mm-hmm. I like the guy who buys old, uh, like, MRE kits. <laughs> and then t- Tries them. And then he'll he'll try them. Ugh. And if there's a cigarette in it, he'll smoke the cigarette. Oh, hell yeah. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's a good YouTube channel. Um, but yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Comic Panels. Oh, and I'm on Twitter at Bean underscore LP. I don't know why I was like waiting for you to like introduce I gave all the other me or something. Before. Yeah, yeah, I know. Excuse me, I like to be introduced, Mister. Dr. Atheus. Hey.